B4, this move now by the FDA, is it a necessary one? I don't think so. Basically, if you look at the literature and consider the effect of labeling, we already know what happens when pictures of the effects of cigarettes go onto labels. And basically, there's absolutely no effect on people who smoke. And the people who might be at risk of becoming smokers, it tends not to affect them either. So according to literature, it doesn't really seem like a move if we're trying to increase public health. It just seems like a grotesque uh, way of virtue signaling that the FDA is definitely against cigarettes. It's, it's so interesting to hear that because I, if I think back to my own experience seeing these labels uh, traveling outside of the United States, Canada has really graphic labels, uh, part of uh, European Union as well, uh, as I recall. Um, what is an effective way, though? Because those images certainly stick in my head. Again, this is anecdotal evidence. This is not based on any peer-reviewed research. What is, though, an effective way to, uh, to stop people from smoking? Well, just knowledge in general. Basically, when people start to learn about the negative effects of cigarettes, which are very real, uh, heart attacks is the leading cause of people who smoke. If you smoke, it's very likely, if you live to old age, that you are going to die of a heart attack. And when people learn about that and that information flows through society, people in general on their own start to stop smoking. And that evidence has already been shown in smoking rates. Among all ages in the United States, we've seen massive decreases in smoking. Among adults, I think it's been about 20% since about uh, 2000. Among children, it's been about 76%. So the FDA's efforts to educate the populace and basically try to convince people that smoking is dangerous and try to let them on their own get away from smoking is already working. And these grotesque images going onto cartons is not very necessary. Okay, well, you are clearly of the mindset that this is not going to work, that it shouldn't really be on these boxes. What about the tobacco industry at large? Are they planning on fighting these new labels? I'm not quite sure what the tobacco industry has in mind. If I was Altria, I would definitely say that this is a First Amendment violation because by definition, it is a First Amendment violation. They have a certain type of speech that they want to communicate and they're not putting that onto their cigarette labels at the moment. And if the FDA is going to force them to do so, that's what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, if you're going to have a First Amendment violation, you should at least have some sort of public health outcomes. And if there's not going to be any sort of increase in public health, meaning a decrease in smoking among smokers, then there's really no point of doing it. And it's just going to be a massive lawsuit. Sure. They're probably going to have a massive multi-million dollar lawsuit. And it's going to be a million dollars of F for the FDA to fight it as mm. well. And who's going to be paying for that? Eventually, it's going to be the taxpayers. You, I, you know, it's, it's Hope mentioned that this has been a decades-long conversation, of course, because the labeling hasn't changed since uh, a lot of us weren't born. Um, but not me, but I was. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people weren't born who watch. Um, but uh, Jacob, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about the idea of a Republican-controlled FDA here uh, under a Republican administration making this type of uh, policy change. President Trump um, has talked about regulatory rollback and has indeed rolled back uh, certain other policies uh, and, and lessened regulations over the last uh, two, two and a half years of his presidency. What do you make of, of this happening potentially under Trump? I don't think it's going to happen. In general, Republicans tend to be family people. And if you consider the influence of mothers and parents on the tobacco industry, the Republicans are probably going to cave to their wants. And we've already seen this with Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell has introduced Tobacco 21 legislation to the Congress, and that is definitely not a rollback in regulations. That's going to be the most obtrusive uh, regulation on the market since I can even remember. I mean, they're actually telling a three-year age group that they're not allowed to consume a product and potentially going to criminalize it. So I don't think that Republican control is going to have any influence over lessening the restrictions on cigarettes. Uh, what about vaping? I mean, you know, there are not these graphic types of warning labels yet, yeah. uh, but do you expect that yes. uh, the FDA may be looking to that now product line? Possibly. If they're able to justify it for cigarettes, it, it seems very possible that they'll try to do that for vaping because the FDA is of the mindset that any sort of nicotine consumption in general is bad. So they're very progressive about doing whatever they can to reduce all types of nicotine consumption. So I, I don't think it would be an issue for about another five to 10 years, but if they are successful with it, with cigarette smoking, yes, they probably will move to it with vaping. Unfortunately for them, there's not really enough information on the long-term negative effects of vaping. I think that vaping is definitely not completely safe. There's probably negative health outcomes, but it's not really old enough for us to really know what it is. And at the moment, the only thing we can really conclude is that it's safer than cigarettes. Mm.
All right, Jacob Rich, policy analyst at the Reason Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us on Chatter today. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great weekend. Yeah.